What's up guys? Today I want to talk about a subject that I've had a lot of experience with, uh, especially here recently in my life, and that topic is overthinking shit. So as, um, as an early 20 year old and as somebody who just graduated from college and is trying to run their own business and um, trying to have a relationship, friends, girlfriend, everything like that. Uh, there's just a lot of shit that comes at you, I feel like, at this time of life. Obviously, in other areas of life as well, but uh, in your early 20s, whenever you're trying to, to find yourself, um, I think overthinking is especially susceptible to this time period. So it's something that I've thought about a lot about. It's something that I have looked into. Um, I, I like hearing from people who are older. I like hearing their thoughts on, on things like this. And so... Uh, it's kind of brought me to, to three ways um, that I see are some of the best ways to deal with overthinking. And so I'll go ahead and start with the first one is from my mega man crush, Gary Vaynerchuk, who, um, to, <laughs> to put it lightly, he has a very objective way of looking at most things, uh, very black and white, which is, is really helpful and is why he's such a... Um, successful entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, um, things like that, why he's doing so well. It's because he takes a lot of the emotion out of it, which is weird because if you look him up, he is a very emotional dude, but whenever it comes to making important decisions, he's very unemotional about it because whenever you're emotional, it can, it can really fuck with a lot of things, to be honest. So his, his main way of, of dealing with overthinking is like, you don't have choice. So, uh, uh, let's take like get like texting your girlfriend or boyfriend or something. You guys are in a fight. You're getting anxious. You're you're feeling worried about what they're going to respond next. You've got to realize that no matter how much, no matter how much you think about what they're going to respond, trying to figure out what they're going to do next, um, it's just it, it it's basically worthless. And all of it all of it's doing is is just. And, and of course, whenever you think about something like that, what do you think you're automatically, just as humans, like what we automatically do is for most people is pessimistic about it. So they're going to do uh, the complete opposite of what I want them to do. And sometimes that's the case, but then sometimes it's not the case. So you've got to, uh, I think whenever you, you take that emotion out of it and look at it objectively and realize that overthinking and dwelling and trying to figure out what is right or wrong isn't probably going to do anything. So I would instead focusing on doing what you can and controlling what you can uh, and, and going from there, which kind of brings me to my second point, which is also kind of an objective way to look at it. And it's, it's, it's also taking not taking the emotions out of it, but a different way of looking at the emotions. And that's just realizing that these emotions, that these thoughts that you're having, all they are are thoughts. And I know that's kind of like, okay, what does that mean exactly? It just means that as, as humans, like we're gonna have these negative thoughts, we're gonna have all this overthinking, all these different things, but that's all they are, is that these thoughts, they come, they arise in our consciousness, and then they go away. That's, it's just, they, they come and they go, they have no morality, they are not good or bad, they don't care about you, and whenever you realize that they don't have control over you, and that you can, you can ultimately, so if you're overthinking, and then all of a sudden you're about to get hit by a car, you can change your mind real quick about what you're thinking about. So obviously that's an exaggerated uh, example, but if you, if you think about it that way, if you realize that you are control, like you don't have to overthink things. And I'm not saying that makes it easy, but I'm saying whenever you can focus on something else or uh, just doing, again, it comes back to control and doing what you can, um, doing something that is actually productive, I think that that's huge. And um, I think that, that can help a lot of people. And also realize that it's okay to have negative thoughts and where you should expect to have negative thoughts, um, but that doesn't mean that doesn't mean. I think what a lot of people do is, and this is a big reason why I'm I'm a positive person. I'm an optimistic person. I always think you should choose optimism over pessimism. But what I think is, 
whenever people talk about positivity and spread positivity and things like that, it's kind of like blind positivity and it feels almost like fake. And so whenever they talk about positivity, they say like, think positive, all this stuff. They don't, what happens is whenever we do have negative thoughts, which are going to happen, whenever those negative thoughts arise and we can't get out of that spiral of our negative thinking, it makes us feel even worse and more guilty because we, we feel like we should be thinking positive thoughts and there's just something wrong with us or, or, or whatever, we're doing something wrong, which is not the case. It's just these emotions will arise and then they'll go away. And so I think, I think having an optimistic outlook and being positive and things like that is super crucial and a good idea, but you have, to, you have to accept that these negative things are going to happen and that overthinking is going to happen, but that's all they are. And it'll go away eventually, just like it always has in your past. Everything that you've experienced in your past that's been shitty and up to this point you've dealt with it, you're gonna do the exact same thing in the future. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's point two. Uh, so, so point three is the most practical answer I can get, and that's just taking things day by day. Uh, whenever people overthink the most, so to think of, of goals and things like that, where, where I work with a lot of clients, we have these big long-term goals or something like that. Whenever you just look at the long-term goal, um, which could be a year down the road, months down the road, whatever, uh, it can be very daunting, and it can make you think about all the work that you're gonna have to put in to get there, but instead, what I tell them not to do is not to focus on this, not the outcome, but instead to focus on the process um, up until that point. So you don't think about where you're gonna be in a month or a year, you think about your next decision. So what's the absolute, the next decision that you can make, how can you make that the best decision possible? And then if you do that every hour, every minute, every second, every day, up until a year down the road, if you do that the best you possibly can, then then you'll get there eventually. But in focusing on the outcome is only gonna make things worse. So if you take it day by day, um, and you take it minute by minute and just make the best decision that you can, I think that that is the only practical thing you can do. Like that's, that's all you can do to bring it back to point number one. Like the best thing that you can do is literally just try and make this day the best day you possibly can. And then those, those, um, those, all those perfect, perfect good days string together will make a perfect week and then a perfect month or, or a better week or a better month. Um, uh, just just like that uh, so I wanted to bring up I've been reading this book by Anne Lamott called hold on wait let's see uh, yeah it's called bird by bird and it's really good it's on writing um, and it's got some life lessons but one of the quotes in it that I really liked said um, it said writing a novel is like driving a car at night you can see only as far as your headlights, but you can make the whole trip that way. So think about whenever you're on your trip, you know where you're going um, and then you're driving at night, but all you can see really is what's in front of you. You can see your headlights, uh, you can see as far as your headlights will allow. And I think if you do that um, with life as well, and you just take things day by day and make the best choices that you can, obviously blind faith and things like that isn't gonna work, but having some kind of flag point up here and then working day by day in order to reach that, I think that really helps minimize the overthinking because you're just focusing on what you can do and not what you can't do. Yeah. So to recap real quick, all three points. So number one, you don't have a choice. You have no choice. Um, you can't change the future or the past, so you've got to focus on the present. Um, number two, they're just thoughts. That's all they are. They have no morality. They're not good or bad. You have to expect them. They're going to come and go. Uh, and then number three, you've just got to take it day by day. Make the best decision that you possibly can. Um, your next best decision, the best that you possibly can. Um, yeah, so I hope that helps. If you like the video, thumbs up, comment, like, subscribe, whatever. Thank you. See ya.